January 1st, 2020. Looking back on years and years ago, I couldn't even fathom the year 2000, let alone another decade coming. Oh, life in review, it goes so quickly, doesn't it? So I ended up falling asleep early last night, about eight o'clock. That's probably the earliest I've ever done in quite a while. And I don't know, I just, I'm not quite with it today. Um, the spine is firing off. And I know like um, they're gonna want to do, I think a myelogram. And uh, I go back, uh, not this week, but next week for a review of the MRI. And I think that the myelogram, um, I've had one in the past. I'm not real thrilled about it due to the possible complications but it's where they put a dye inside your spinal cord, or um, not cord, but the space where the cord is to look at all the um, compressions and deviations, things that, in my opinion, might uh, be like preliminary tests diagnostically for a potential surgery. I'm praying I don't have to do this. The thing about what I have is you can't see, you just can't see the illness. Um, you can sometimes see it in the way I walk or, or I might be very careful with uh, things, but you know, like this is, you know, the feeling is gone kind of. And uh, so, but this isn't about that. Um, when you look at, at, at a new year, you begin to think about what could be. And sometimes a mind will go toward what possible uh, trials and tribulations will I encounter in 2020? And, uh, you know, you think of those things and you think, well, what if I say, what good things will come in 2020? Whether it be something that is something difficult to deal with or something joyful. And if we put our mind toward knowing that things can happen for a reason and purpose, for strength, perseverance, for our own um, journey, for for giving to others, we can take those possibilities of, of those negative thoughts of, oh, wow, what am I going to deal with this year? And say, you know what? Whatever happens will be for a greater good. And, and so every day and moment, let's just seize the moment. And, and this kind of goes back to the whole reason why I kind of named the channel Katie's with the joy, because you hear the saying, choose joy. And yes, we can choose joy. Joy is ours. Um, it can be that way every day. But tomorrow's never promised. So you look at, well, then maybe we need to we need to choose joy. And this can be by finding inspiration, even in the smallest, most tiniest things, uh, something good can happen. So no matter what we end up dealing with, whether that be on a personal level, with family, with work, with, with health, with, with uh, just life in general, you know, it can turn good. There's something that I noticed this year, and I have a hair bothering me, so I keep doing this. I parted it on the other side and tried some hairspray and there, but um, let's not digress there. So easy in our world to express negative emotion. I can worry really well, 
I can get frustrated exceptionally well. I can lash out at a stranger the way they don't drive right or, or get impatient by people's misgivings or their lack of, of understanding, their lack of um, enthusiasm. Uh, every day is filled with it. And how easy is it to express those kind of emotions? It comes to us pretty natural, doesn't it? What if we started saying, I'm going to put myself in their shoes or put someone else first and look at their life through their viewpoint? You never know what someone's dealing with. What if I start exercising more patience in my daily routine? What if I am kinder to others? What if I don't leave people behind? For example, uh, let's say someone needs a little additional help and or you're training somebody let's say on a job okay and they need a little extra help it's so easy to become frustrated and say i'm not dealing with it go ask somebody else i can't do it one would say okay that's great you know you are now being at least honest thankfully but what if we we uh started uplifting others and didn't leave anyone behind. And it kind of goes back with my life philosophy as always do what's right, uh, find joy, be inspired, and never leave anyone behind. Okay? That's how we uplift others and pull others along, irregardless of, of their understanding for things, um, knowing that you can never save anyone from themselves. You know, we understand that. But just on a daily basis. So I'm looking at, at this new year and I kind of reflect where I have been. And I can say, yes, I have, I've had this event, this event, this event, this happened, this happened, this happened. But is life events or is it more how those events changed you and how you can look forward to the future by looking at the past. I would say this year for me was a year of self-actualization. And so you look at what is self-actualization? Well, it's the realization and fulfillment of potentiality, one's potential. And my potential has been, actually I think I'm just on the cusp of it to be honest, is, is reaching others, and, and it's just now coming to light really. And, and I think this, this channel started to play into that, um, so you learn, like musically speaking, okay, or where are my talents? What is my niche? What am I meant to do? And sometimes people don't, don't find that in life. Sometimes it takes them years. For me, I'm middle-aged now. Okay, so I'm old. Some people say she's old. Yeah, you're old. I'm kind of cool for being old, right? At least I hope so. Um, someone older would say, you're just still young. Look at all you've got to do. For me, I'm kind of middle-aged. I'm not old, I'm not young, I'm just kind of stuck right there in the middle. All right, that's fine. So this, I, and I used to fight that. I thought, no, I don't want that. I, I have to always be young. And we can be. It's a matter of what's in here. So, actualization. I have come to the conclusion that I am comfortable with life 
I'm comfortable with where I'm at. I'm comfortable on my journey. I'm comfortable in my faith with great uh, opportunity to become more, to inspire, and I'm comfortable where I'm at um, with, with uh, getting back to, to some of my innate talents. So what can I do to inspire others? And that's kind of what I'm thinking in 2020. I cannot think about events of what, what will happen but I can think of what could be in a more intangible way. So that's 11 minutes here. I think I might just go ahead and close that. Welcome to 2020. I do hope that maybe we're going to see an explosion of something really spectacular here. In this small realm of influence to become better than we were before and uh, use use these universal uh, understandings languages of art and music and inspiration um, and the human condition as a catalyst to get to that next level of, of awareness and maybe self-actualization. With enough faith in, in what we can't see, enough faith in ourselves and others to um, make this next year and years from now the uh, most joyous and uh, guess gain of wisdom and understanding to uh, be better. And, uh, it's our human condition, it's our, our existence. What can we do to make a difference? Make every day a legacy. What will you re be remembered by? And uh, you know, there's that old poem of the dash, you know, you talk about your date of birth, date of death, uh, physical death and the dash what was in between and um, yeah it's kind of like that I guess so I think I'll just close this now good food for thought and, um, have a wonderful prosperous new year uh, I want it filled with so many blessings for you and your families and those you know and, um, just keep going Yep, what a ride it is. Thank you for being here, by the way. Thank you for the confidence. And uh, thank you for believing in the message and knowing that we are, we're on, this, we're on the, the doorstep of something bigger. I can feel it. It's an awesome place to be.